Hello everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and I am bringing a new video to you guys today. Um, this video is going to be on a, um, a small bottle night light and the, one, the bottle that I'm going to be using today is one of these little amber bottles. You can buy these on Amazon. I bought the ones that I have actually probably at least two years ago, but I know they still have them on Amazon. They come like this and they have a little black screw on top, which I won't be using today. So I took the, the lid off of this one um, to make this bottle nightlight. And I am making this one for my friend Flora. Um, she had asked me to make one for her and I thought well I'll just go ahead and do this one and put it on a video as well so Flora this one's for you um, I am glad that I'm finally getting the time to make this and I'm sorry that it has taken me a little bit of time and that was only because I just with starting my new job and everything, my mind got away from me and I completely forgot that this was a project that I needed to get done for Flora. So, Flora, my, apologize, my apologies to you, but today it's getting done. And you'll get to see the video on how I made your nightlight. So, I hope you like it. And um, let's just go ahead and get started on this. So the first thing that I'm going to do, these are some of the goodies that I'm going to be using um, on the bottle. Not all of them, some of them, and you guys all know from watching my other videos that I kind of create as I go. Um, nothing is set in stone when I start a video. So some of the things that I'm going to be using are some of these, maybe some of these lace pieces that I set aside. Um, I've got some little blingy pieces that I think will go really pretty on this. So I've got those and I've got other pieces of bling over here to the other side. Um, I'm also going to be adding an angel to this one and I'm not exactly sure which of these I'm going to use but I have these that I get from Kiki Sale. They're super cute. My friend Debbie makes these out of resin and she has sent me so many of these beautiful little angels and um, I love using them in my projects. So um, without uh, further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this so that we can um, hopefully make this not such a terribly long video. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little fan brush and as you guys can see this brush has seen better days but um, I did finally break down this morning and ordered some new brushes because I'm desperately in need. I've been using old brushes for a long time on everything so I thought it was about time that I ordered some new ones. This is the napkin that I'm going to be using to Mod Podge onto this bottle and with this one because of the amber color of this bottle um, it puts off a really really pretty glow when you add the night light but I am going to use all three plies of this napkin um, and the reason for that is because I don't want it to be so transparent that you can't see the flowers when you turn on the night light. So um, I will be using all layers of this napkin today. Normally I don't do that. Normally I take off the back two plies and or I paint my bottles white. But with these amber bottles, I don't like to paint them white because I like the amber glow that I get um, from these bottles. So um, my choice today was to just uh, go ahead and use all three plies of the napkin and I think it's going to work fine. I've done that in the past on some of the other night lights that I've done and it works out fine. And on this one we're going for um, a shabby a, a shabby chic look but also a, um, a, a sort of a vintage 
look um, and so this napkin when it goes on it will have some wrinkles and bumps and things like that and I actually want this on this particular nightlight because I think it adds to the character um, and so I've just painted some of my Mod Podge on there and this is the Mod Podge I'm using it's the gloss luster um, Mod Podge so I'm just gonna start by laying this so that I, I get it set at the bottom so that it's lined up just the way I want it from the bottom and I'm just gonna sort of press it on here for now all the way around trying to keep it even at the bottom as even as I can anyway and again I'm just pressing all the way around this is a little bit more difficult if you're using all three plies of the nap not difficult I shouldn't say the word difficult it's not difficult it just um, it's thicker and the Mod Podge does not go through the napkin completely when you're doing it this way um, so really what I'm doing here is I'm sticking the first layer down and then when I brush over the top I will be getting the other layers soaked through so that all three layers will um, stick to the bottle but in the process you kind of have to go around and add Mod Podge. This Mod Podge dries really really fast um, so as you're putting this on and getting around these corners it's actually drying in some areas so um, I'm just adding sort of as I go and you'll see I cut this napkin just so that it would just meet in the back and here I'm gonna just kinda put a little bit on the outside here when I meet them together to kind of um, make sure that both edges are down and um, they're meeting in the right spot. So normally, you guys know when I've done some of my other Mod Podging videos, I don't care to usually use a straight line like this in the back, but I am going to cover up that line with embellishments. So I'm not too worried about that um, on this particular um, bottle. So what I'm going to do here is I want this napkin to come up on the edge here of this bottle neck. So I'm going to add some more here. And you're going to get wrinkles and crinkles up here. I'm not worried about that. Like I said, I actually want some wrinkles in this because I'm looking for a specific look on this nightlight. And um, Flora had chosen uh, from a similar one that I had done. Now this is not exactly the same. The napkin's not the same. I am having to use a different napkin because I don't, I no longer have the one uh, that I used in the one that she was um, choosing from but this trust me is going to be equally if not more beautiful than the one that she um, was looking at to kind of get her idea of what she what the type of nightlight she wanted she wanted specifically in this kind of bottle so that was the main focus for me today on doing this one was to get you know to use the proper bottle and um, to do this the way that the other one was done. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Now this is probably the hardest part here is getting around this neck. And actually I think I'm gonna take my scissors. I guess I'll just use my little scissors. And I think I'm gonna just kind of cut a little bit off of these 
edges here just because it's it's actually really starting to gather up on this edge and I'll start trying to lay that down here and again this is a little harder to work with when you're working with all three plies because you have a little bit more bulk and and because the Mod Podge isn't going completely through all of these um, it wants to pull away so I'm sorry I get into this and I'm I start talking and then I have to stop while I'm thinking about what I'm doing so up around the neck of this bottle right now it may look a little bit wonky but that's okay because most of the neck is going to be covered with embellishments so I'm not super concerned with that at this moment but I do like to cover the neck because um, I want it to look the same you know where it's poking through as the rest of the bottle so I'm going to stick my finger in here and now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to kind of go over the outside here and make sure I get it soaked through to all three layers of the napkin. And again, you guys have seen me do this before. I paint over it and then I take my fingers usually and I just very very gently go over the outside to make sure it's pressing down and it's it's getting through to all three layers especially in this circumstance where I have used the entire napkin I need for this Mod Podge to get through all three of those layers otherwise it's going to start trying to pull away and I'm not going to get the look that I'm looking for so And again, I'm just putting a light amount of pressure around the bottle. Not quite all the way around, but we're getting there. And you can feel sometimes in some places where it starts, you'll you'll feel or see a bit of a bubble. I've got big chunks of glue stuck to my finger already. Um, where you'll see a bubble where it feels like it's just not sticking to the bottle at all. Get a good amount of Mod Podge on those areas and make sure you're pressing them down so that you're getting the product through all three layers. And here I'm just kind of getting to the bottom of it and I've gone all the way around the bottle and I want to make sure I press down and get the bottom pressed around as well. So now you're going to want this to dry and I have a little uh, heat gun that I use I'm going to go ahead and step away for just a moment while I get this dry and I'll be right back to continue on okay so I got this all dry and here's what happened um, this is the part that you didn't see and it didn't uh, record and I'm sorry for that um, what happened was when I got this all dry um, I stuck my lights in there to see if I liked the way that it was glowing and even with the three plies of this napkin it felt like it was just I was losing too much of the um, images once the light was on the inside it was too dark 
Um, so here's what I did. I took white paint and I just used, and you can use just your acrylics that you get from Michaels, whatever you want to use. I used my Krylon chalky finish paint. I actually happen to prefer a chalky finish when I use paints because number one, it dries faster. Um, so what I did was I just dabbed that white paint all around the outside. I lost my images <laughs> and then I added I took my my napkin that was just that I had already sort of cut up that's just one ply and I just tore out um, the flowers in sections and in sections I put them all around the bottle here so that's what I did and I really um, like the way that the light looks inside of it yet you guys are not going to see that yet because I'm going to go ahead and finish embellishing the bottle. And you can see at the top, it's not the neatest around the top of the bottle, but that's okay because we're going to be covering this part with embellishments that are going to completely cover all of that. I like to, to bring the, um, the napkins all the way up to the top um, because... I don't want it to be totally amber up at the top and then white down here. So um, that's just the way that I do it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start embellishing the bottle now. So I've got this on. I used my heat gun to, to dry everything. So I've got it all dry. And you can see it looks really pretty with those um, flowers around the outside. And then I'm going to take some of this pearl and rhinestone, um, excuse the paint that's on my fingers, guys, some of this pearl and rhinestone um, trim, and I'm going to start sort of going around the top with this. And for this, I am using my glue gun. So I'm going to start down here, um, or actually up here where the, the bottleneck is, and I'm just going to put a dot of hot glue there and I'm going to start this going around the bottle. And we'll just kind of go around in sections, making sure that it's even across the entire top part of this. And I am using my Gorilla hot glue. I do like this hot glue. It does get very stringy when you're working with it. That doesn't bother me because those strings, uh, in case you don't know, um, once you're finished with a project, if you take your, your heat gun, I just lost my glue gun, and you go across... Um, your project with the heat gun it's going to dissolve all of those strings for you so you don't need to really worry about that too much um, it can be annoying when you're working on a project and those strings are sort of all over the place um, another way that you can um, fix that problem one of my viewers gave me a tip is by um, uh, freezing your um, glue sticks uh, before you use them and then those strings I guess do not get as bad so that's just one layer I'm gonna put another layer of this same trim I have to get my roll out here because the piece I have left is not long enough and I'm gonna go around underneath that layer and this one I'm just gonna kinda measure it and cut it ahead of time So again, we're just going to start and get that piece stuck down quick enough. Put a little dot of glue behind that pearl. Okay, and we're just going to start here. And 
going to put down that first piece. And these are going to be kind of staggered from the top row that we did so that the rhinestones and the pearls are in opposite sections. It kind of makes it fill in a little bit better if you do it that way. I'm about to run out of glue in my glue gun, but I've got another stick ready and waiting to go on. <laughs> so we'll be all right. I may get around this. We'll see. And we're just going around the entire neck of the bottle. until it meets over here. And that's how the top looks. And it's okay, you can see a couple of little uh, amber spots that are popping out there. That's okay because I'm going to take another um, a piece of my AB rhinestone and we're going to go across the top edge of the bottle with that and it's going to completely cover up the rest of that so I think right now I'm going to go ahead and go around the bottle neck and cut this off so that I'm not working if I can get it to do it so that I'm not working with a big huge piece of rhinestone chain so let me see if I can get around this all the way. And I may have an extra rhinestone here, but I'd rather have an extra one rather than not enough. And I'm going to go ahead with this part though and this AB rhinestone I'm gonna take my um, E6000 in the first little spot I'm gonna use a little dot of hot glue once I put in my new stick there I'm gonna start it off with hot glue so that I can get this to stick down and give me a start and then I'm going to take my E6000 and I'm just going to, if I can get the lid off, I'm just going to go around the entire edge of the top with my E6000. And we'll just get a nice little bead going all the way around. Close up that lid because we all know that E6000 likes to ooze. And I'm just going to go around this entire top edge here with this AB rhinestone chain. And then we'll adjust once we get to the end. We'll kind of adjust it. Of course, you know with E6000 you do have a little bit of play time. And I've got two rhinestones too many. So let me just cut those off. And pop that down there. It's wanting to stick to my fingers here, so give me just a minute to get this going right. I think what I did was I got my pearls a little bit too high here, so it's not exactly wanting to end in an even spot. Okay, let me just go around and 
Get that on there good. Press it and make sure that the distance between my rhinestones is good. And I think what's happening is because of that hot glue, I have a little lump or clump there that's making this last bit not want to stick. So we're going to get that off of there. Okay. And we'll add just a dot of the E6000 at the, the end here. And let's see, I'm going to get a little piece of cardboard to put a dot of that on so that it's not, I'm not going to get too much on there. And I'll just take a toothpick here and just take a little bit of that E6000. and sort of lay it on there and voila okay so now we've got that going across the top edge and I'm just trying to kind of straighten it out, make sure it's all on there straight. So that's what I've got so far. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another bit. I'm going to try and decide here, do I want to do this or not? And we'll have to see here. Yeah, I think I'm going to take another bit of this AB rhinestone chain. I've measured it around and I'm going to go around just this bottom section now. So again, I'll take my E6000. This time I don't think I'm going to use the hot glue. I'm just going to use the E6000 for this because it has a little bit of an edge that it's going to lay on so I don't think I'll have a problem with it falling off. And actually with the E6000, it sort of sets up within a few minutes to where it, it really doesn't move. It's just kind of at the very beginning when you first put your piece down that the E6000 is really movable, which is something you want so that you can straighten out your piece and get it exactly the way you want it. So. But um, within about five minutes or so, it sets up pretty good and doesn't move around real easily. Um, if you're someone who, you know, sort of prefers to wait in between things, I wouldn't use a heat gun to try and dry your E6000. I don't think that's um, a good way to do it. You may want to set your piece aside, let it dry for a, a couple of hours, and then come back to it and you'll be fine to work with it. So, but for me, I've been doing this so long that I've just gotten to the point where I'm okay with working with the E6000 and continuing to go on with my projects. And I'm just adjusting my rhinestones so that they're laying exactly the way that I want them because that lip of the bottle there is the bottle sort of starts to um, get larger right here and I'm able to lay these rhinestones so that they sort of lay into that little corner and they lay very nicely on the bottle and they it has a really really nice look so that's kind of what I'm doing right now, making sure that they're laying down nicely and of course that they're laying in a um, uniform way. Sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do, but I think we've got it pretty good. 
And you guys, we're not always looking for complete perfection here. So don't worry if you have something that's a little out of um, out of sync or whatever because you're going to also be adding other embellishments to this. Here's what I'm going to be doing too just so that you can see. I have this little um, ball uh, bead. It's, it's actually quite large, about the size of a marble. And I'm going to be using that as the top to this nightlight and it's going to look really really pretty. It kind of has a vintage coppery look so I think it's going to be really really pretty sitting on the top of this bottle. So the big thing is is that now I need to determine which edge I want to be the front of the bottle and of course you're always looking for the area that has the nicest pattern you know from your image and all that good stuff so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my lights because I also want to make sure I hit the area where the lights are gonna pop through the nicest um, and they're gonna you know give a nice glow so I'm just kind of pushing these into the bottle here kind of all um, in no special way, no neat way, because you want these lights to kind of spread out inside the bottle. And so I try not to press them in too much together. And then I'll take a little, one of my little wooden tools here that I use for clay and things, and I'm just going to kind of shove them around in there. I'm going to turn on the lights. And I know you guys can't see this. I have to take this bottle and sort of put it under my table and look for the best spot that I can see that I want to use as the front portion. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm going to move my lights around to see if the area that I want to use can be set a glow really nicely so and you can actually see the flowers from behind from the original Mod Podging that I did so they're kind of um, faded in the background which looks really pretty so I've determined which side is going to be the front for me and that's going to be this edge right here, this section right here, because I like the way, actually no, it's going to be this section right here. I like the way the light glows through there, I like the way the flowers are placed, and all of that good stuff. So, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start embellishing even more on this little guy. Um, what we want to do is, I have some lace pieces here. And I want to use a little bit of this lace, not too much, because I don't want to cover the whole thing up. So I'm going to cut some pieces off here that I can use. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of go around a couple of these leaves here and flowers. And then I have another one of these little baubles that I've already cut off another one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this lace and we're just going to kind of place it in a couple of locations. Or maybe, um, you know, and just kind of decide where we like it. And I think what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to lay it across this bottom section right here. I'll start sticking that down so it has a starting point. And this um, applique has uh, pearls in it. Now when you're using appliques like this, you have to remember those pearls are sewn down. And the thing that you want to remember to do is to make sure that there's a bit of glue behind each one of those pearls or rhinestones as it may be, depending on your appliques, um, you can get these particular ones at Kiki's Sale 
and I will be providing a link to um, that shop on Facebook for you if you're interested in going over there and checking out um, Debbie's bits and, and pieces because she does sell some really awesome um, laces and and um, bling and things like that. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here because I actually want to glue this bead back on because here you can see there's a piece of thread sticking up and that bead came right off that piece of thread. So you have to make sure that you keep um, that thread at the end glued down and I'm going to put another one. I have an, a spare bead over there that I'm going to glue onto this petal here. There wasn't a bead there originally but I'm going to add one. So I've got this little bit here and I'm going to put that towards the top like right about there. So I'm just going to add some hot glue here. And hot glue works just fine when you're working with lace and gluing it onto pieces like this. It works really well. So I'm just going to press that down and I'm going to add it behind a couple of these flower petals at the top here so that it sticks down. and then make sure that these ones at the bottom are secure and so far that's what we have there looks really pretty um, and then the way that one's sitting it's kind of off to the side I also have this piece of filigree and I love it it was actually a flat piece that I bent around so that it would sit on this bottle let me see where I want it just like that and I think it looks really really pretty on this bottle so I am going to put that filigree piece on there and I'm just gonna take my hot glue and go around on this make sure I get it in the spot where I want it and press it down and I just have to make sure it's on there straight you're gonna get some hot glue that's gonna press up in between the the holes on this filigree don't worry about that because those little bits of hot glue you can pull them right off of there they'll come right out if you can't get it with your fingernails you can get it with a with your pliers or what have you so I'll just take my little pliers here grab a hold of it and pull it off of there just like that These pliers are bent at the end, so they don't work so good. Let me see. I have some um, some needle nose pliers here somewhere. I just had them a little while ago. What did I do with them? Oh, there they are. I'm going to grab these, and these will grab it and and help me to pull it out. Because with these, I can kind of get into that hole and get it out of there. And the other side looks pretty good. So that's what it looks like so far. Super, super pretty. And then I have some of these other little um, bits that I was thinking maybe if I put that sort of in the center of that filigree piece it would look really nice. So I'm going to take this and I am ever so slightly trying to bend this around a little bit. It doesn't bend easily, but I think I can get it enough that it will lay nicely 
on the front of this filigree piece. But on this piece, I really need to use some E6000 because we're going metal to metal. And so what I'll do is I'll use E6000 in a couple of spots and then I'll pick one spot where I haven't touched it with the E6000 and I'm going to use hot glue. That way it initially will stick down and hold until the E6000 has a chance to cure. So we're just going to lay that right in the center of that filigree piece. Right there. I'm going to hold it down for just a minute, give it a chance to remember where it's supposed to live. <laughs> and I'm even pressing to make sure I try and kind of bend it a little bit more. So that's what that looks like. Really, really pretty. Flora, I think you're going to love this nightlight. I think it's going to be my favorite too. Maybe I maybe I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I think you're really going to like this one, Flora. I hope you enjoy it. So far, I'm super duper happy with the way it looks. Okay. And now I'm debating on if I want to use no, I don't think I'm going to use the leaves. I'm going to um, take some of my little flat back pearls that I have sitting here. Oh, I know what we need to do. We need to figure out where we want our angel to go. And I'm going to just kind of set this up a little bit for myself so that I can see what I'm doing. know that that one's going to work quite right. Okay, now I'm going to put this piece which is really pretty. My friend um, Candace sent me a roll of this um, gorgeous, gorgeous chain. And so I'm going to put some of this at the top. I'm trying to figure out why it's not. There we go. There we go. It wasn't pulling quite right. Um, okay, so we're going to put that at the top. I still haven't determined where I'm going to put my angel yet. I need to make that decision and I need to make the decision of exactly what style of angel I want to use. I have several different kinds and I just don't know which one's gonna look the best on this so I'm trying to determine that. That one just doesn't lay flat enough um, this one actually looks pretty good. Whoops. If I could just hold on to it, this one looks pretty good right here. I think this is the one I'm going to use. She looks really pretty. And again, I'm going to use some E6000. along the edges there and I'm going to use hot glue in the center 
again so that that hot glue sets up and sticks it down for now and then it has time to sit and dry the rest of the glue, the E6000. But that hot glue will stick it on right now so that we're good to go and keep working. Okay. I have a little bit of glue squeeze out right here that I want to get off of there. It's just a little bit of the hot glue. And again, I'll go back over this at the end and I'll check for any, you know, little bits and pieces of glue squeeze out and things like that that might be in the way. And we are going to add a couple of flowers to this as well. And I just want to decide what I want to use. If I want to use just maybe a little white rose and a couple of smaller flowers around it, or do I want to use this pink rose? I think I'm going to use the pink one. It's sort of pink and white. And then I'm going to use some of my smaller flowers to kind of go around it. But I also have these um, velvet leaves. And I think I am going to take at least one of these leaves and I'm going to put it coming off to one side here to add that pop of green and then I'll take this flower and place it right there And then I have some of my smaller flowers that will just kind of go around the edges with. Maybe we'll grab a couple of these light pink ones, maybe one dark one. And I think I'm going to grab a couple of my little white roses. Uh, but for these, I've got to take off the green leaves that are on the back because they're just too bright and I don't care for the green color on these so I always take the backs off of these so we'll be using these little tiny white roses I don't know how many we'll use but I've got to get moving on this thing so that we can um, finish up here so we're just going to start kind of putting these around. I'm going to start with one of these pale pink little flowers. It's not a rose, it's a, I don't know what you would call it. And we'll do a darker pink over here. And let's see, let me look at this for just a minute, sitting up. Maybe I'm going to go with another one of the darker pink up here. Yeah, we're going to put that one up there. Boy, I've just got glue and paint all over my hands. I'm sorry, you guys. 
Um, <clears throat> okay. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take this um, this is from an earring it's got two little uh, rhinestone butterflies hanging from it and we're going to hang that somewhere I think probably coming out from under this big rose I just have to find a spot to hang it from where we can see it. Maybe not. Maybe we'll go over here and just have it coming straight down in the middle of this thing a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going, whoops, I'm going to use a dot of hot glue right here and I'm going to grab this rinds Oops, this rhinestone at the top, and I'm just going to lay it really well into that hot glue. It's just going to sit right in that crevice, and I'm going to take a toothpick here and press it in. And those two little butterflies are just going to hang right down the middle like that super pretty I am going to put one of these white roses down here right down here coming out off of the pink rose And then I do want something not that thinking I want something to place sort of in the center of the 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 lace piece with the flower in it and I'm looking for my my little bits and pieces that I keep in my little heart um, let's see, not that, it's too pink. Um, oh, we have a little bow. Yeah, we're going to use this little clear bow, and it has a loop on it, but I'm actually going to leave that loop there, and I'm going to glue this little clear bow right there and I'm going to hold it down for just a minute cut this little piece of string that's driving me crazy my scissors aren't cutting it <laughs> okay yeah I think that bow looks really pretty there alright so For the most part, I think we're almost done with this piece. No, we're not going to do that. Um, Maybe the one thing I will do is take a couple of clippings of this AB rhinestone. Let's see if I want to have that kind of coming from the same area as the butterflies. 
No, I think it's a little bit too big, so I'm not going to use those. Um, okay. Now, one thing I am going to do really quickly here is I do want to add some flat back pearls to this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my E6000 and in a couple of places I'm going to put some dots of that where I think I would like to add some pearls. And... I will take my handy dandy rhinestone picker that I have a video on you guys. You guys can look at my video on how to make these little rhinestone pickers. They work like a charm. Um, and just add those little, I have a bunch of these little flat back pearls sitting over here to the side that I'm going to use to to add to this. And half of them seem to have flipped back over the other direction. And we'll get a nice big one right there. And we'll put a little rhinestone right there. And a pearl. And another pearl. And let's see, I know I had a whole bunch of these out earlier. And one more pearl there. And I have an open spot right there for a pearl. I just like to add a few pearls and sometimes rhinestones. I have some of these flat back AB rhinestones and I think I might use a couple of those in a couple of spots too. So let's just make this really really blingy and really really pretty for my friend Flora. She's waited for this and so I need to make it extra special just for her. She's been super super patient so I want to make sure I send her something nice. And we'll put one there. And we're going to put one there. Okay, I think we've got the bottle pretty much done. The only thing I am going to add, I am going to be adding, number one, we're going to add the lights. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Then I'm going to add some diamond dust to the outside of this to give it some extra sparkle. And these are the style of lights that I'm using. I'm sorry you guys, I've got this all twisted up. Okay, these these are the style, they come much nicer. They come with these little battery packs. You can unscrew the battery pack, you can put a new battery in there. It's got a little switch on the outside. I leave that switch on the outside of the bottle. I glue it to the outside so that you can turn it on and off when you want to. These make exceptional bathroom night lights. Um, I love these in the bathroom. And when you've got company coming, it's a nice thing to be able to put out just, you know, for the evening and turn it on and everybody enjoys the soft glow that you get from the night light. And it's a little conversation piece too. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and get these little lights in there and then I'm going to sort of adjust and organize them in there so that I get the glow in the places that I want it. And then what I'll do is once I get done with this video, I'll wait until evening or until I can find a spot where I can get, um, well, I'll probably wait till evening uh, so that I can do it with my camera here in my craft room um, to get pictures of it with the light on where you can really see the glow because it's the middle of the day right now and there's no way that I am going to be able to um, give you a good view of how it's going to look at night. So I, at the end of the video, you will see um, the glow. But what we're going to do is we want the screw side out, facing out, because you want to be able to open this up and change the battery, guys. So make sure, if you're making one of these, that you leave the screws to the outside and I'm just going to glue this at the back side of the bottle there we go and then I like to take maybe a dot of glue here and just sort of try and lay down the um, the cord so that it's sort of more flush to the bottle Let it sit there for a minute and then again we have our little topper here that we're going to use as our cap So we're going to find out you know kind of how we want that to sit there and I am going to glue this down to the top of this bottle and actually we need to use E6000 for this process so that this ball stays in place. So I'm just going to go around the whole top with E6000 I'm going to lay that on the top And I'm actually going to put a dot of hot glue right over here to this one side and press it down and see if I can get it to stay there. Um, so that it doesn't pop out. Okay, hopefully that's down there good enough. I'm going to turn my lights off and I'm going to see if I can get you guys a little bit of a preview now. Um, and then I'll get a better, a, a better visual of the glow with the light on later on that I'll add to the video. Let's see if I can get you to see what this looks like now. Okay, there's a little bit of the glow. You can't really see it too good. Um, but we'll get pictures and I will show you guys just how beautiful this looks um, coming up in the next scene. And um, I know you're going to love it. And... Flora, I know you're going to love this nightlight. It's it's so, so, so pretty. I think it's about, I think this is actually the prettiest one I've ever done. I, I really, really love it. As far as my tiny nightlights go, this one is really super, super cute. And it will make an amazing gift if that's what you're using it for. Um, I need to make some more of these and get them in my store. Um, but I'm going to try and find something so that I can hold this top down so that it has a chance to um, cure and stay on the bottle. And I don't have to worry about 
if it's going to come up or not. Um, so I'm going to find that. So I will be back. I will be coming back with more video of what it looks like at night. Be back in a few.